In accordance with the meeting, open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending and those at home listening. Um, anyone here for public comment? Uh, board member reports. We'll start with Mr. Masseri, if you have anything. Just uh, point out to the board that uh, we have another wastewater meeting on Wednesday afternoon at 1. We continue our discussions of moving water program forward and we have a meeting on the 6th at 7 in the evening with uh, members of the Mountains Pond Church related to potentially acquiring some land for a chlorine uh, injection system for the new water system coming from Andover. Okay. That is milestone that has to be completed prior to the completing the uh, submittal of the FEIR for the water system. Great. Thank you. Anything else? No. Keep on plugging. We're one step closer. Mr. Schultz. Uh, just real brief, I wasn't able to make the last meeting. It was a little under the weather, but it was very encouraged to see the community involvement with the 20 Elm uh, project. The community came out, and it was great to see the organization. And um, just, it's just nice to see the community get involved in something. That's all. And it was pretty clear at that meeting, just to kind of add on to make sure we're very clear on it, that you know, our community embraces 40B projects. We enjoy them. We, we welcome them. Uh, we have a great process to implement them in the town. And I just want to make sure people in town know that it's not about 40B. It's about the wrong location, too much density in that area. And that's that's the bottom line. This is nothing to do against 40B. We welcome 40B in North Rhode It's a location issue with me. It's, it's a yep. density issue and wrong location. Mrs. Minipelli? Just to add on to that, I think it was pretty clear from the number of people that attended that meeting that everyone is in the, is of a consensus it's not just this team here that had that consensus but it was just so many people in the room that had the same uh, consensus with regard to the project location density and all the other issues and i thought that was a very well well done thank danielle thank the ta for that the work on the letter thank the, the town team for all the input on that i thought that was well done when it ultimately went out and incorporated the comments that people made. And then just one quick, maybe it's a reminder for the board, but I would like us to acknowledge at the next town meeting, Kathy Tartino and Judy Hall for their years of service on youth services committee. They, there's a meeting going on tonight, I think right now, or if it didn't end already, but I just want to make sure that we acknowledge them. They're the ones that really brought this whole committee together it evolved into a department we have so much that has um, positively rippled from that that th their efforts I'd like to us to do something to acknowledge them at the sure. town meeting we certainly can take a note of that I know it's been about nine years since we made it an official department in town right I think it's been close to nine Roughly years uh, mr. Masseri just getting back to the 40B, uh, just so everyone is aware, the town has filed a document, and it can file after or uh, before we heard that there was a 15-day extension. So there is still time to provide input to the state. That's good. That's what my note was going to be, but that's good. I'm glad you pointed it out. Anything else for Mr. Minipelli? But it is, uh, we are coming close to our deadline to submit. Uh, we did get an extension, like Mr. Masseri had said. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that we, we dotted our I's, crossed our T's, made sure we, we have all the comments collected, we've got all the feedback in. And, um, but I think 
Danielle did an outstanding job putting together the, the input uh, to the state and we need to continue to look at the environmental impacts so, Mr. Gilberto. So just because the members have brought it up, so we are um, in discussions with our consulting engineers at Wright Pierce, um, separate from their work on the um, water and wastewater project relative to the environmental uh, impacts at the site. So uh, there may be additional comment that we offer relative to that uh, issue before the deadline. If that's the case, we'll add it to what's um, public right now and post it on the town website and provide the board a copy via email. Okay. Anything else, anyone? Okay. I'm all set, so we'll go on to the next thing on the agenda. And we have a presentation this evening on the ARP network of age-friendly communities. I'm going to turn it over to the town administrator to introduce uh, Mrs. Perenni and her sure. team. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. So uh, the uh, Elder Services uh, Director, Mary Perenni, is here this evening along with representatives of the Council on Aging. And at a meeting um, a few weeks ago, the Council on Aging uh, recommended this program for consideration by the select board. So I'm going to ask Mary to come to the podium if she wants, just to give a, maybe a brief overview. And I believe we have somebody here from the AARP as well. Mr. Gilberto, if it's okay, that they yep. can either be comfortable here at the seat <coughs> yeah, in front of the great. microphone or the podium, whatever you're more com comfortable with. Hi, everybody. I'm excited to say that a few weeks ago we had a meeting with SCOA board and Mr. Prisco uh, concerning the AARP Age Friendly Network um, and they're coming to North Reading and people are talking to us about being age friendly and acknowledging our elders. So we have tonight the same gentleman who, pro who prepared a uh, presentation for us a few weeks ago, Antron Watson, he's from AARP and ironically we have the same title of both age friendly directors. <laughs> So um, he was kind enough to come back to North Reading to speak tonight about what he told us last week. And so. Antoine, thank you again for making your second commute all the way out here from hey, the no city of Boston <laughs> to our community. No but problem. we really need you here, and I think the town's looking forward to continue to have AARP part of our community. So uh, you know, I'll turn it over to you and Mary to go through your presentation. I'll save my comments to the end. Great. Uh, thanks for having me out here again uh, to, you know, to speak to you all um, about Age Friendly uh, and what ARP is doing um, in regards to the Age Friendly Network um, nationwide and here in Massachusetts more specifically. Um, you, you all had a series of handouts there, uh, books. One that's just giving you a brief overview of what Age Friendly really is. Um, you know, in, back in 20, 2006, um, ARP was approached by the World Health Organization um, because there was going to be a, like a big boom on aging. Um, and Communities need to be prepared for that. Uh, so ARP, being who we are um, here in the states, um, we're focused on addressing aging um, and encouraging folks to, uh, and communities to be prepared uh, for aging as it hits us all. Right. Um, so uh, age friendly uh, network of age friendly communities. It's uh, it's not a retirement village. Um, it's not a gated development. Um, it's really about the leadership, uh, community leadership, uh, committing to making sure their communities are prepared uh, for aging um, adults um, and children, honestly, who are going to be, who are also aging. Um, it's, a, it's a free membership organization, or a free membership into the network of age friendly communities. Um, it's really about support. Um, ARP is here and committed to helping communities who raise their hand um, and say that we want to be a part of the network. Um, it's not only ARP, uh, we're working with the Tough Health Plan Foundation. Um, Executive Office of Elder Affairs, um, MCOA, um, and, a, and a host of other um, partners um, around the state. Um, last year, uh, Governor Baker did um, announce that Massachusetts was going to be the second age-friendly state. Um, they've made that commitment, and uh, recently they just submitted their uh, action plan, um, committing to assisting all 352 communities here in Massachusetts uh, to become age-friendly. Uh, so with that uh, being said, um, here in Massachusetts, we currently have um, about 38 communities um, that have joined the network. Um, and uh, yeah, by, with that being said, uh, you know, I, I can answer any questions you may have um, about Age Friendly, um, the work, the process of joining. So Mary, you have anything you want uh, to say? I, we, uh, I looked at the application, 
that we would have to submit. And we're doing a lot of this already. You know, part of it is eight domains of livability, and we looking at outdoor spaces and buildings. You're in the process of hopefully, um, not even hopefully, we'll be getting an intergenerational center in, in the near future. We're already talking about transportation. As you know, we have some transportation with uh, the MBRTA, but looking at transportation, housing, we're always looking at housing and new programs. Um, social participation, um, we're already dealing with, um, we have our senior center, obviously. We do a lot of intergenerational programs with Parks and Rec. And within the intergenerational center, we'll be able to do even more uh, to interact with the younger people. Um, respect and social inclusion, very important. We do that already because a lot of people that we are living in town, and you probably know within maybe 10 or 15 years, 40% of our population is going to be at least uh, 60 and older. It's a huge amount. And how do we want to keep these people in town? And what's the reason that uh, they're going to be attracted to North Reading after the, their empty nesters, the kids get out of school? What's North Reading going to do for them? Civic participation and employment, there's always volunteer opportunities. And employment's very important, trying to um, engage older ad adults into the workforce. Um, communication and information, we do a lot of that at the senior center already. You know, we're always informing people. We get at least eight to 10 calls a day on where can we go, how do we do it, uh, who's gonna answer my questions. And you know, community support and health services. So um, we have doctors in town, we're close to hospitals. We're doing a lot of this already. So it would be actually um, meeting the goals that they ask to become more of a friendly community and see if we're actually meeting the goals that we're looking at housing and transportation. And we also have our ACT group, which is part of our social service team, which is actually under the CIT group. And um, that's a great group that they're already actively looking into um, housing and transportation. So we already have a group of people in place to work on this. I mean, as you know, we already have the bike path that's looking at going forward. Um, and that was started in our uh, ACT group. So um, I'm excited about this, very excited about this. And especially now where we have a group of people from our ACT group, from Social Service Action Team, we have a very active um, COA board coming forth that would be willing to you know, work with this group. And it'd be nice to have that big sign, welcome to North Reading, age-friendly community. And then we have, you know, soccer championships, 1982, 1985. But this would be very nice to have. Yeah, the seniors yeah. are now, yeah, the yeah. seniors are now part of that soccer team from right. 1982. So um, I want to thank you for coming out again tonight. I mean, yeah. it's going to take some work, but I think we, we can do this. Yeah, absolutely. Mrs. Minnie-Belly. What, what do you need us to do for your application? Is there any input that we can provide? Um, I know you have a committee that's assisting you, but what, is there anything we can help with? So uh, what we do need uh, for a completed application is buying from uh, the town of uh, Board Selectman. Uh, that, that's one of the main requirements of the uh, age friendly uh, process, um, is having buy-in from the leadership, um, the elected officials, um, and having their letter of support uh, to include with the application. Right, so we, and that's always hoping, that's why I put on the agenda this evening, I'd like us to take a vote to um, accept this, op or to take on this opportunity. It allows us to write a letter um, in making the commitment and then the process will start the planning process i think it takes a couple of years roughly uh yeah so the planning process um is yearly it's about year one and two yeah um so and mr no oh, sorry go on Ms. go ahead i just i appreciate your bringing this resource i know it's been a part of the strategic planning before i came on the board but since i've been on the board to try to, to address this need because it is our population is aging and there's things that we need to provide or do as a community to keep keep our aged population here. So thank you for bringing this forward. You know, I, I'd be in full support of yeah, A few years ago, um, maybe even five or six years ago, I attended an age-friendly community uh, seminar because this has been going on for a long time and it's basically by types. And I actually went with Rich Walner to a Burlington Marriott, thinking there was going to be maybe 100, 200 people there. There were over 1,000 people in that room, and it was very impressive. But at that time, it was tough dealing with Cambridge, some of all, you know, the biggest cities. So to finally see it come down to a level of a community in North Reading is 
very excited. And I just wanted to throw this out. One of the um, questions or one of the answers on this cheat sheet that they give you when you're filling out the application. Uh, how will the community engage and involve all the people in the process of becoming a more age-friendly? One of the first lines is, an age-friendly community is one in which older adults encounter a welcoming attitude from policy makers. So by you taking hold of this project, I mean, that's already answering one of our questions that needs to be answered. Mr. Masseri. My question is, uh, how many local communities have are involved in this right now. I know you said there are about 36 communities. I'm interested in those that are adjacent to North Reading, like Linfield, yeah, Wilmington. Uh, we so definitely Arlington. Um, several of the uh, communities in the, um, what is it, the uh, Minutemen, the Minutemen area. Yep. Um, there's about 13 communities in um, right there. Wakefield. Uh, Wakefield is also in um, Stoneham. I believe they're also in the network. Um, your testament here. Uh, we do have a map uh, actually on our website uh, that does include all of the um, uh, towns, cities and towns that are in Massachusetts. Um, so I can make sure you all have that information as well. And I do have a list somewhere in my file. So Kimberly? Back to that <coughs> Kimberly probably has to stay close. Um, Kim Manzali, uh, Council on Aging. I just wanted to jump in a little bit if I could. Please. Um, if you could just move the microphone down towards yep, you a little bit. There are um, several surrounding communities, Stoneham, Wakefield, uh, Andover, um, Swampscott. Uh, it's really kind of, uh, if you go on to um, the Massachusetts Healthy Aging Collaborative website, there are a lot of local um, uh, clips of news where people are really addressing this issue of, um, you know, the growing population of, um, of seniors. And the goal is to have the seniors stay in their community. Um, we used to say aging in place, but it's really aging in community. You don't want to be stuck in your home sitting doing a crossword puzzle. You want to be engaged in your community. So um, I think that um, it's just really important that um, if we have a letter of commitment from our town officials, we would move forward with the Council on Aging filling out the application. Um, and it just really gives us a little bit more of a detailed plan uh, for the next couple of years. It seems right in alignment with the master plan. Um, and again, we're doing all of these things already, but it'll give more of a focus um, with the Council on Aging, you know, supporting, supporting that drive. So. One of the reasons I really, truly love this program when I read about it and went through it is you know, one of the challenges faced here in North Reading short term is we don't have enough senior housing options. So we have to, we really don't have an option for our seniors, so they have to stay at their homes longer. And what I love about this is now we have a network that they can reach into to help them stay in those homes, live a little easier, a little more comfortably. You know, Mary, I know you and your staff have done all you can do with the resources you've been provided, and you've reached to the point where you can reach, but now this takes us to that next level of reach in a bigger network and I think that offers our age-friendly community uh, another opportunity that they d doesn't exist today when we already know we have a problem we don't have enough places for them to live so let's make their homes that they're living in now more comfortably give them more resources and I think this is a wonderful way to do it I applaud you all the COA members for bringing this forward and uh, and I look forward to it so if there isn't any other questions I think we have a motion this evening mr. Gilberto <coughs> excuse me <coughs> Nurse. <That's a> <laughs> <laughs> that would be a no. Um, the, but the motion that would be recommended would be to authorize the uh, chairman to sign uh, a letter of interest in, in the program. Mr. Uh, chair, I'd like to make a motion <coughs> to authorize the chair to enter into a letter of interest in the program of the ARP Network of Age Friendly Communities. We got a motion by Mr. Schultz, second by Mrs. Manifelli. Any other discussion? <laughs> no. Up. Before we move on, I, again, Antoine, I know this is very quick, but it means a lot for us to make that commitment to come here. Uh, Mary, I want to thank you and the COA uh, group for bringing this forward. <coughs> we will get this done. We'll take the vote. I think we're going to get unanimous support. And I know Mr. O'Leary couldn't, unfortunately, make it last minute, but I know this is very important to him and his family. As you know, his, his mom has made an investment in our aging community, and I think this just goes along with 
uh, you know, sort of their beliefs and their core commit, their community commitment here. So um, if he was here, I know we would have his full support in this, and I'll pass along his thank yous without him being here. Mr. Gilberto. Just a quick question to uh, more for the um, Elder Affairs Director. So there's an application I know that needs to be filled out. Is that something that you're comfortable with completing? Yes. And the letter would go alongside with that, I believe. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, and any help, I'd be more than help, yep. happy to assist. Yeah. I'm sure Michael will do it. It's going to take some work, but we'll, we'll get it done. Great. I'm very excited. Any other I want comments? To thank everybody for finally recognizing. I no shouldn't problem. say finally, uh, because I know you are all concerned and, uh, about our seniors in the community, but things come to fruition. Yep. It's just amazing. So thank you all very much. No, it, it is time for us to talk, start taking larger steps forward towards our objective to. Uh, find solutions for our seniors, and that includes housing, <coughs> services, and so on. So this is a great step to continue in that progress. So uh, without further ado, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Aye. One absent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have a um, meeting with the RMLD. Um, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. O'Brien's here. And she's going to talk about how R RMLD is uh, aging friendly as well. Colleen, do you need to, are you doing any presentation? You don't need to. I, I do. You, okay? Do you need the um, projector? I was just going to put the. Yeah. Perfect. If we could assist. Let me just get over Yeah, okay. Great. Excuse me. You want me to take that? I'll just take it. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Good evening. Oh. Yeah. Too much stuff going on. Okay. Thank you for having me. Um, thanks for having RMLD with me tonight. I have uh, Chuck Underhill. He's our new Integrated Resources Director. Chuck, he comes from us from, uh, was helping out Danvers. And before that, he was with Vermont Public Power. So he has hit the ground running. He's got a wealth of information. So we're really glad to have him on board. And I'd also like to say thank you to Jason Small. He's our CAB representative, as you all know, and he does a great job. And it's really awesome having someone there that has that electric utility sounding board. He's helped out tremendously. Thank you, Jason. Welcome, Jason. Okay. I feel like I'm walking and chewing gum here. Hold on a second. Okay. Well, we don't give you a lot of space to work with over That's here. That's OK. So. Um, Okay, so uh, good evening, and thank you for letting me do this presentation. It's uh, the RMLD fiscal year 2018 uh, highlights, and typically what happens is every year I'll do uh, the annual town meeting in Reading, and then when we're done with that, I'll meet with each of the towns. So far, we've met with uh, Wilmington. So I use basically the same template. We meet with the town managers or town administrators prior to see if there's any other additional information you'd like. Uh, if you find that there is during the presentation, let me know, and I can get some information back to Michael uh, tomorrow. Um, uh, the annual report has not <coughs> been sent out to each of, uh, of anyone here from the RMLD, and that's basically because we're waiting on pension and post-employment actuarial numbers that we collaborati collaboratively do with the town of Reading. So as soon as that's done, we'll we'll send them along. Um, as you know, the RMLD serves 28,469 meters throughout the towns of Wilmington, Reading, North Reading, and half of Linfield. Wilmington being the bulk of the load at 54.6%, Reading at 20.4%, North Reading at 18.5%, and Linfield at 6.6%. Our mission remains to provide low price electricity with excellent reliability, customer service to all four towns their residents, commercials, and industrial customers, and all of their, um, all of the municipal electric as well. 
Each year, the RMLD has a theme that aligns with our mission. And this year, we focused on electrification. And what electrification essentially means is converting fossil fuel sourced uh, appliances, vehicles, and such uh, to electric sourced. And then converting electric generation from fossil fuel to that which is carbon free. That's a big movement in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, we just uh, were one of 42 municipals. They actually herded all the cats together, all 42 municipals just put in legislation uh, in order for us to meet some renewable and uh, carbon-free portfolio going forward. So as soon as that legislation is, is acted upon or mm -hmm. some kind of uh, modification thereof, I will come back and let you know how we made out. But it, it basically says that we're committing, even though we're exempt, we're committing as municipals 42 to do our part to make uh, the, the environment cleaner and what we plan to do in the next stop uh, from now until 2050. Correct, Chuck? Yes. <coughs> the RMLD has sponsored electrical safety and conservation training and art contests on all third grade classes in all four towns. Over the last couple of years, we added a high school contest and have reduced costs in producing our annual report by going paperless and util utilizing some of this amazing high school student artwork. Here are our winners. Instead of doing first place, second place, they were all just so amazing. We ended up coming up with award, um, uh, you know, naming them. So this is the environmental inspiration award winner and it's Megan Corum from Reading Memorial High School grade 11. Very avatar. The community inspiration award winner uh, was named the foundation of Conserver conservation by Laura Bersimi North Reading High School grade 10. And I don't know if you remember uh, last year Laura had won first place or uh, she got the cover of our annual report last year. Was that Shred the Peak? It was Shred the Peak. Um, it was pretty amazing. I actually have a picture of it at the end that I can, she's just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, the Clever Award, also from North Reading High School, Juliana Corner, grade 10, Nikola Tesla Shaves the Peak. The Holistic Award winner, Harmonious Relationship, the Zhu Tian of Reading, who goes to St. John's Prep, grade nine. And the winner of our annual uh, cover report was uh, Jesse Ding, Wilmington High School, grade nine, the global inspiration winner, entitled Community Power. Sales in kilowatt hours have dropped from 1.5% from fiscal year 2017 to 2018. In fact, sales have dropped in, at Reading Light for the last four and a half years. This is mostly due to conservation measures, solar, and, and those type of issues um, that we provide rebates to achieve. So we want to be able to help our customers, which reduces sales, but at the same time, we have to try to focus on how do we maintain all of the benefits of public power? The RMLD is now focusing heavily <coughs> on increasing sales such as with electric vehicles, air source heat pumps, along with our economic development opportunities. Our new outage management system is up and running and therefore by these, this winter or by the end of the winter we should be able to email, text or phone you with outage notifications and I had told Michael, earlier today that when we get ready to roll out that uh, IVR system and OMS system, we would come back and ask for another presentation so that we could let the public know how you sign up for those and how that outage management notification system will work. As of January 1st, the RMLD switched to a calendar year budget to align with the Department of Public Utilities reporting and efficiencies to maintain only one set of books. We continued our strategic planning to address revenue generating oppor opportunities through economic development. We received a million dollar grant awarded by the Commonwealth for the installation of a five megawatt um, battery storage unit which is going to be installed this summer in, uh, in North Reading. Uh, we installed the outage management system and as I sta stated we'll be back to discuss the IVR system. The RMLD launched a new mobile friendly website, which I'll give you a little peek here. 
I don't know if you remember our old one. It was uh, very 80s looking. And so now we have uh, simple icons. It's very user friendly. Uh, you can also use the, uh, the search website and it's pretty detailed. Uh, whatever you're looking for, our finances, our budgets, uh, any of our service requirements handbook, our terms and conditions and rates. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, we, this year we added a 100% electric Chevy Bolt to our fleet and we installed multiple uh, plug-in chargers. Uh, we, uh, during the summer we ran a pilot for I think eight weeks where we rebated uh, both used and new electric vehicles. We ended up taking, they took 52 deliveries over that eight week uh, pilot program. And um, it's pretty amazing. So we're doing the analysis right now. Uh, to see if maybe we'll run another one again next year. We continued impl implementation of our mesh network program, which is basically allowing uh, some meters that are not as smart as they should be in order to make jumps to other meters in order to get to the collector. And so that it's a, that's how we're communicating back to this outage management system. So we're working on that. We will have I think about 3,000 meters that are not going to be able to be collected, but they still will be captured in, in area outages. So when you look on the new website and we put the IVR system in, you'll be able to see like polygons of areas that are out with updates, you know, estimated time of restoration, and those people who have those meters will be collected in. Those 3,600 meter replacements are scheduled over a number of years due to the expense, but we'll still be able to get them out some messages. Uh, we continued with the new Wilmington substation land procurement. Uh, we have two areas, one on Balladville Street and one on 125, Route 125. We're in negotiations on both of them and we're hoping to uh, get that settled this year and then uh, construction of that substation which basically fo focuses on the capacity load where they built Target in, in uh, Wilmington. And so that substation will be built 2021. We continued our implementation of the organizational study, reorganizing the department to uh, improve uh, succession planning and uh, skill sets. Um, this year, again, for the fifth year in a row, we received a clean financial audit with no management letter. Just going back over what Shred the Peak is for, for everyone that, you know, during those high times uh, where not the most clean plants are asked to turn on. We want to make sure that those, any dirty plants that get turned on because electricity is its highest use, not only are they not the cleanest, but they're also the most expensive. So we have a number of residential customers and commercial customers that are signed up for our Shred the Peak program. When we shred the peak with commercial customers, we share those benefits. Um, the program's going pretty well. We'd like to even do more because of the savings gets spread back across all of the customers. You can go on to the website if you're interested in signing up. The Shred the Peak efforts that we're actually doing in-house, uh, we have two community solar arrays, which are in our solar choice program at 2.7 megawatts with a savings of $30,000. 2.5 megawatt natural gas generator that we installed last year in North Reading with an approximate savings of 380000 and then the five megawatt plan battery storage unit in 2019 with a projected savings of about 140,000. The grant, by the way, offset the cost of electricity, not the, uh, not the cost of purchasing. We are leasing it, not purchasing it. We actually, when they gave out the grants, they gave Taunton one who's buying it and us that's leasing it so that there's two different types so that the state can analyze which one works better. So there was a whole, a whole reasoning why different things were, were given out on that um, that whole slew of, of grants that got given out on the ACES grant last year. The customers shred, uh, shred the peak, 15 large commercial customers shred cumulatively, cumulatively 4 megawatts of monthly peak at a savings of 34,000 and annual peak with a potential of another 318 in savings, but this wasn't captured last year. 800 residents shred cumulatively 0.4 megawatts of monthly and the annual peaks at about 36,000 in annual savings. Suggestions to the homeowners or commercial about how to shred the peak. Um, 
we've gone over these before. They're pretty basic, but uh, between the hours of 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. And we do still tweet out for, for shredding so that anyone that's signed up for RMLD, RMLD tweeting will get those notifications. Customer efficiency programs, just as a reminder, every year we update our rebate program so that we're always staying ahead of the curve and we're always there analyzing so that we can offer customers some money for things that might be new technology but they're more efficient and it gives them a little bit of extra money so they'll buy those, um, those type of products. Economic development and revenue generating. Um, we have a strategic objective at this time about keeping rates uh, low um, and enabling new technologies, but we, we want to make sure that the kilowatt hour sales remain. Uh, economic development is something where we've had one of the guys that, one of the engineers that works for Chuck now, Tom <coughs> Alilla, he's been actually helping out with North Reading on your economic development team. And thanks to you guys and the success that that's ha happening, now Wilmington is asked if we go over and be part of their economic development. And, and I'm hoping it will be all four towns. And just as a reminder, it's never the intention of RMLD to try to push economic development. We just want to be there for you. If you're interested in developing further, let us know. And, and we can tell you all the different ways that we can help. If you want to try to bring customers in, you want to help certain customers, uh, we have a number of programs to help out with that. When we did bring in Osram Sylvania into Wilmington, this was basically the list of things that we provided to Osram because they had to choose between four different towns and, and they went with Wilmington a lot based on the rates at the RMLD along with this uh, list. Uh, just going back over proactive cycle maintenance programs, uh, we continue with these. Uh, I just want to let you know that you know, a lot of these maintenance programs, they're new and we're, we're doing them in a very, um, some of them in a more aggressive manner because we, we lay out these programs based on failure analysis. So if poles are failing at a particular rate uh, and a certain amount have to be replaced, we'll lay it out in the appropriate amount of years based on the cost. Um, if things start to get the frequency starts to increase like transformers. We've had a lot more transformers go than have in the past. Uh, we may have to bring that forward and, and make it a little bit more aggressive. We're doing a study right now with that because anytime a transformer is rusted on the bottom because it's over 40 years old, I mean snakes can get up there, it, 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 it can just, it can start to weep and leak and we just don't want that, that to happen. We just completed our GIS system so we're now aware of the ages of all the transformers and we have a program to replace them but it seems like we have to go even faster. So um, it, the, the guys are doing, a great, the engineers and the guys are doing a great job with these maintenance programs and, and keeping up with the analysis but if anybody um, knows of any transformer that looks like it may need to be replaced or they want to call us on the phone if they're seeing something that looks a little odd, please give us a call and we'll be glad to go out and take a look at it. The LED streetlight programs that we got a partial grant from the state on, uh, half the grant went to the municipals, half the grant went to our uh, non-municipal uh, residential and commercial LED customers. Uh, I just want to let you know after the three years we're complete and of those whole three years we actually got no complaints. We had one head that was adjusted and other than that, it was a, a very successful program, and I hope you guys are, are happy with the lighting and um, that it's going good in your town. Any comments on the street lights? Good program. Mr. Goldberg. I'll, I'll just highlight that with co the conversion to the LED, we were able to turn on um, a number of shut-off lights, which uh, I want to say we're in the 33 to 40 percent range of all of our street lights, and uh, it, at the same time with that conversion, uh, it cost us less than it was costing before to have all the lights on as LED. So um, it was a great program for the town. Okay, so thank good. You. Um, the next one is the double poles. Uh, on the left-hand side is the double poles as of January 16, 2019. Um, uh, if you look at the table on the right, those are the, those are the total poles owned by, um, by well, it's owned by the Reading Light, I should have changed that. 
but those tell you how many poles in each town. On the far right, the custodial responsibility, each pole, even though it's owned by half Verizon, half RMLD, we do split the territory into custodial. And what that means is, <coughs> um, like in North Reading, the RMLD is responsible for setting poles, and then when everyone is done transferring, we come back and we take out the pole butt. And like in, in Wilmington, for example, uh, again, ownership is different from custodial. Verizon will set the pole and take the pole butt out. So on the left-hand side is just a snapshot of that day of how many are in each, each attacher's, what's considered ball and court. So RMLD has 22, eight to transfer, 14 to pull uh, for a total of 41. The North Reading Fire Department, I wasn't able to get into the system today, but I believe that's down to one, that, that 12 is an error. So they're down to one. Mr. Gilberto. I just want to point out that uh, a year ago when we were here, we were at roughly 40 poles that were in the fire department's um, uh, ball and court, you know, that, that we were effectively potentially holding up the process yeah. of moving a pole or otherwise. I want to thank uh, the fire chief, Don, St Don Stats, and Captain Murata for their efforts to, uh, to get this uh, done in a timely fashion. Um, uh, as well as, I, I know there was some assistance that we got from the uh, Reading Fire Department as well. So it's great to see that number down to one. Mr. Messeri. Are there specs on the leaning of a pole? What is allowed and not allowed? Um, well, the poles are essentially sunk down about six feet. And, you know, if they're, I'm not going to say if they're guide properly, but there's movement in the ground that'll have them lean a little bit. If you think it's leaning too much, let me know where it is. I mean, there is some lean to a lot of the poles. Uh, they should have guys on them that go back about 20 feet that will support them. We are running pole analysis on each and every pole that gets installed. Uh, but some of them do have a lean. It doesn't mean that they're not safe. Um, is there any one in particular you'd like me to take a look at? My question is related to the technical spec that you live with. Is there a lean degree that's not acceptable? Correct. Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, I would, Jason, you want to help me with this one? <laughs> I would say if it's more than 30%, but I don't think there's a, a particular degree because it's is it the eyeball test uh, no so it's the strength test it's the pole loading calculation on the pole and if it's guide properly but is there it's a not a actual degree they think it's like a hard tool, but um, I mean it's not say Jason, could you introduce yourself as well? Uh, Jason Small, I reside at 16 Turner Drive in North Reading. And you're also a member I'm, of the advisory I'm the advi uh, Citizens Advisory Board member to RMLD from North Reading. Great, thank you. Um, just in my experience uh, in the electric utility industry, uh, you know, if you get over like 20 degrees, it definitely needs to be probably looked at. Um, and then figure out what exactly is causing it to be that way, whether it's a rotted base or improper guying or some sort of that nature. Um, a five to 10 degree or even maybe is not uh, the question of okay. Um, they do, like as Colleen said, they do settle over time and there are different forces pulling on it and a lot of different utilities attached. So they, sometimes they bend a little bit, sometimes they lean, it might not be a lean, it might be a bend, but um, around that area, I mean, I mean, we would still probably, you could still probably go look at it, but probably I wouldn't expect a lot to be done unless it was exaggerated to where it was causing clearance what violations. I think is that uh, we're at, there are areas where the poles are leaning quite a bit, and I was just wondering if you had some spec on them. Uh, it seems to be related to the amount of wires hanging there. <coughs> it looks, almost looks like if you were going to put a straight pole and you're going to have to do something with the wires too? Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, it also depends on the ground. So if the ground is soft and uh, the pole, the, the weight sets the 
pull the pull over and the base starts to slide in the ground. So sometimes what can be happening is the, the guys end up getting slack or the conductors start to like sag. So then you can go out there and try to pull the pole back with the guy, tighten the guy, put more dirt back into the ground. Or if that's not going to work, there's other things that can be done. Um, and yeah, sometimes uh, if there is enough of it, a pull from, a, from some conductors, the conductors want to go where they want to go. They want to be in the most straightest line possible. So sometimes that may require a pole set and a side set if possible to, to get them more in line or, a, or maybe a longer bracket can be attached to put it all a bit further. I mean, there's all sorts of things, but if it's a slight degree of lean, it's probably not of any concern. It just happens over time. But, uh, you know, if there's, like I said, if it gets like around 20 degrees or more, then the conductors are going to all set the sag. They're going to have clearance violations. And, um, so if anything kind of like that, you get definitely should probably call on and it can be looked at. But, you know, just a little bit like this isn't probably of any concern. Yeah, I, like I said, yeah. I don't know that specifically there's a degreed angle in our engineering books that say it, but if it starts to look odd, we would go out and look at it. So if you have any that you think uh, you'd like us to take a look at, um, just give me the street addresses. We'll, we'll just ride by and, and take a peek. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Masseri? Well, I'll, I'll give you one. Okay. It's at the corner of Susan Drive and Pleasant Street. Okay, I know that one. Neighbors there. Is that over 30 degrees? <laughs> uh, that pool's, uh, it's bending a lot at the top. I would say uh, it's leaning a little bit. It's not quite in the area of concern, but I think over time, it's going to okay. be. A, it's got about a three to five foot lead length on the guy, and that's probably a 35 degree angle on the spacer cable. What did you say? It was Susan and what? Pleasant. Uh, Pleasant. It's also the intersection of Turner and Pleasant if you're on the other side. It also looks like there's stress <laughs> cracks in the pole. I, I, that I can't answer to. Okay. We'll take a look at it. It's the riser pole and the Turner Drive. But as I drive around town, there are a number of poles that are leaning and, and very observable. And I'm just wondering if there was a spec that you lived to. Not that obviously, not that aware of in it's my more years. judgment than a measurement. Yeah, it's more, yeah, I, I don't know of any hard and fast rule on it. In the time I've been doing the work, but um, <coughs> It's typically by eyesight, and if it looks odd, then something gets done. Like a lowly, and uh, I think the only straight poles are when they first set, pretty much. Okay. Sometimes um, some poles are actually intentionally set with a little bit of a lean. So if we know the, the angle that's going to pull a little bit in one direction, you might just key it just a little bit in the off direction. So when it does settle, it becomes straight. So that's been done in the past. So. Anything else, Mr. Messier? Good. Please continue. Okay. Sorry. Um, so the, to wrap up, uh, we are working on our, our strategic plan, and um, uh, we've had a number of um, we've had a number of meetings. We're actually getting some help from your town on that. Is it okay to mention? I am helping them. Yes, I am. I volunteered <laughs> to give our MLD some of my time to help them cr create a strategic plan, very similar to the one we have here in North Reading. And I think we're actually meeting again tomorrow That's on right. another session. To uh, yes. and it's it's coming along very nicely. I yes, think your team has done a great job. I, I think it's going to be beneficial for all the communities that work with our MLD <coughs> when you get done with the project. So yes, we. We greatly appreciate it. We, we had one team meeting and, and Mike facilitated it. We learned, everyone learned a lot from him and, and it's great to have the senior managers building this so that they can all buy into it and, uh, and going forward. I think in, it's very impressive to see North Reading's strategic plan and how you keep it up every year. And it's simple yet it's comprehensive. So it was a very good model to use. Uh, didn't scare anybody, but it, but it had a lot of teeth and it had a lot of um, meaning behind it so we appreciate that and thank you to Mike for helping us um, uh, we're still looking at the economic development opportunities as I told you to offset <coughs> some of the drop in sales electrification uh, and its impact on demand and supply 
the new Wilmington substation, um, the electric vehicles, rolling out the outage management system and the IVR, uh, expanding the school outreach program. We're always thinking of things to add. We added the 10th grade, I, I mean the seniors, uh, I mean the high school program. We'd still like to add more program. We were thinking of doing like a like a new home, new homeowner thing in each community where we can have people that are just getting ready to buy a home and what it's like, how to read their bill, how to save energy and, and to do all those things and maybe partner with some other utilities that could come in and so these new homeowners could learn uh, all about learning, you know, buying a house and, and what it means. I mean, I really didn't have anybody around to teach me and it would have been nice to have a class like that. So we're working on that as well this year. Um, we're also completing our strategic visions which within each of the divisions of the department. We're continuing our Get Greener, Go Paperless, and Be Efficient campaign, and we're continuing our talent management training and recruiting uh, and succession planning. Uh, I do want to let you know we have several vacancies at the RMLD. It's a great place to work. Uh, I will tell you that a lot of the jobs are niche. They, they do require some specific type of training. Uh, but if, if you want to take a look on the website, they're starting to get uploaded uh, and we're w we'll welcome anyone to, to apply and take a look at them. We're always looking for great talent. I just put this last one up there so you can remember uh, Laura Bacini's uh, one on the right, which she won last year on the electric tree. So um, those have been our covers for the last four years and uh, we're really proud of them. Thank you for having us. If you have any questions, like I said, Jason, thanks for being here to help me out. <laughs> Chuck's here if you have any questions on electric vehicles or anything that has to do with auditing or anything while he's here. Um, if not, I appreciate your time that you've given us. So I have one thing, and uh, I don't want to put Mr. Bellavance in the, uh, you know, point him out here without giving him a heads up, but you know, Bill's on a community planning team. Uh, he runs a uh, community, community planning commission. And one of the things I've always wondered is, you know, we're in the 21st century here, you know, is we put out building permits for larger structures, uh, more buildings, more retail places. We design, we, you guys provide inputs on parking lots. You, are we ever going to get to a point where we say, by the way, every, you know, 10 parking spots, one of them has to be designed and set up for electric vehicles. And same thing with homes, as we build new homes in town, we should require homes to also include or encourage them to include the infrastructure for plugging in electric vehicles. I think the more we can do in our codes or, or at least encourage it in our design and builds, I think it would be good to kind of go along with what we're doing here. Yeah, I think uh, if, if, if Chuck can speak for a second, we've, Mike, you made that, uh, that um, idea to me made a couple of years ago. And when Chuck came on board, I'll let him speak for himself, but we've already started down that road. One of the things that I have instructed the engineers that do efficiency <coughs> program design and key accounts uh, is to put together some information to reach out to the planning and zoning commissions in each of the four towns to discuss what changes we can make uh, to incorporate into new construction uh, I agree with the electric vehicle uh, for parking, uh, but there are some other uh, things as well that we can do. New construction is one of the most cost-effective places uh, to incorporate efficiency rather than uh, retrofitting it. And so uh, they've been tasked with reaching out uh, to do that. That would incorporate uh, solar on the roofs. That would incorporate uh, EV charging stations in parking lots. Uh, either for commercial facilities or in the case of residential multifamily uh, housing, whether it's a subdivision or a condo association or whatever. So we are uh, pursuing uh, working with the communities uh, on that effort. Hey, Mr. Gilberto, and I'm not sure if our code enforcement office has edu been educated on these, on this technology and you know, if there, but there, there's a way we become more educated as a, as a, as our own municipality. Um, I think I would encourage, it. and I think work with RMLD. They certainly have the resources to educate us to help us, and then maybe there's somewhere along the way we have to change our bylaw or our codes to encourage it, or maybe even require it in some massive build 
like for example, you know, Pulte Homes, you know, it's a little late now, but they still have three more, four more buildings to build. You know, maybe we can get them to encourage them to start including more plug-in vehicle structures on site. I think it just goes along with what you are trying to accomplish. It fits within your mission, what you. And, um, and I think we should be part of the solution. I think all the communities should be part of that solution. Anything else? Thank you again for the report. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate it. I think, yes, as you know, the double poles are still very important to all of us. Um, Mr. O'Leary isn't here this evening. He apologizes he had to miss. But you know that he's every year brings up and he really right. would like. But the progress is great since, yep. you know, from one year. It's certainly trending in the right direction. We appreciate that very much, though. So, and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow, Chuck. Jason, thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you. Then. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. <coughs> few minutes, we'll a few. Yes, we have a few minutes. So, minutes for minutes. Um, let's jump to minutes for regular for January 14, 2019, regular and executive session. Mr. Schultz. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the January 14, 2019, regular session minutes as written. Second. I got a motion and a second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussions? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous, one absent. Right, executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the January 14, 2019 executive session minutes as written. Second. Got a motion and a second Any uh, by Mrs. Minupelli. Any <coughs> discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. One absent. Okay. We have about three minutes before we have our hearing. Um, Mr. Gilberto, do you want to maybe start into your town administrator's report for about three minutes and then we can cut free and get to the hearing? Certainly. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, just want to advise the board uh, and the community that the work to assemble the fiscal year 2020 departmental budget request uh, is ongoing. Um, the budget hearings have been scheduled for Saturday, March 2nd, which is the DPW fire and police hearing. And then Mondays, uh, March 4th, 18th, and April 1st. Uh, as was the case last year, the board and the finance committee should expect to see departmental requests that include personnel and or expenses to address the town's long-term <coughs> growth needs. Uh, because of the extent of these requests and the ongoing work of the financial planning team, uh, I do not anticipate making recommendations on individual departmental budgets until the conclusion of the budget hearings. Um, at this time, the available revenue for town and uh, school operations, or I should say at that time, the available revenue for town and school operations and administration will be further known. Um, so the, uh, really, the, I think the only difference that you should expect to see from last year's budget process is rather than coming back and doing the so-called reconciliation of all the departmental requests to a balanced budget um, at the end, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do that by doing all of the recommendations at once, which in my opinion will probably be better and more reflective of the, uh, the input from the budget hearings themselves. Um, I attached a copy of the comment that we submitted to Mass Housing regarding the proposed development at 20 Elm Street. Uh, the deadline has been extended to February 1st. Uh, we didn't find out about that extension until um, Tuesday, January 15th. And because of a concern that uh, we would not have gotten our comment in on time, we did submit that initial comment and reserved our ability to file a supplemental comment. And as I mentioned earlier, that's something that we are looking at more from the environmental standpoint. Uh, with uh, the consultants, uh, consulting engineer. Um, I encourage residents to, uh, if they've not already, send in anything that they might have for a comment um, to the town planner, and uh, she will uh, aggregate <coughs> those comments and forward them along to mass housing by the deadline of Friday. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I do believe that there was some recent newspaper coverage with regard to um, this as well. Um, to just let folks know about the extension, but again, um, with regard to the email address that we're using, it's planning at northreadingma.com, and that will forward right to the town planner. Um, I attached information regarding the value of state-owned land within the town as it relates to fiscal year 2020, and uh, that, that'll be uh, ultimately what the town receives is for the payment in lieu of taxes will be dictated by the amount of money that's put in the budget, but that gives you an idea of our allocation, whatever the total number is, what percentage we'll have of that. Um, I just commented that due to the effort that was put into 217 Main Street and 20 Elm Street, um, the facilities master plan um, 
project had not yet begun. I reissued the memo to uh, the involved mem uh, committees with new timelines attached, and we're hoping to ask the select board to approve appointees on March 4th. I know the school committee was going to take up discussing that tonight yep. at their meeting. I know uh, Karen in my office spoke <coughs> to the Historic District Commission. So um, we hope to have a slate of folks that the board can appoint to that committee um, at the first meeting in March. And then attached to my email um, was uh, correspondence that I circulated to my counterparts in nearby communities relative to the uh, uh, issue of plastic bag bans to get some feedback, uh, just to get us kind of pointed in a direction relative to that, uh, presumably for potential action at June town meeting. Sure. Okay. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Well, that perfect. That gets us. And if anyone has any questions for the town administrator, we can come back to it. But at this point, we're at the 8.15 time for the public hearing for the June and October town meeting dates for 2019. Uh, do we have a do we have a notice? We have a hearing notice, please. Mr. Chairman, the Town of North Reading public hearing, the town meeting dates, the North Reading Select Board will hold a public meeting on January 28, 2019 at 8.15 p.m. in room 14, North Reading Town Hall, 235 North Street, to receive public input on selecting dates for the June and October 2019 town meetings in accordance with the North Reading Home Rule Charter 2-4-1. That's from the North Reading Select Board. Mr. Gilberto. Through you, Mr. Chairman. So as a result of the conversation <coughs> the board had, its last, had at its last meeting, I forwarded the dates uh, of <coughs> June 10th and October 7th. They're both Mondays for the June and October town meetings, respectively. I got a, uh, a, a, uh, an opinion from town council that came back to us that basically indicated that uh, um, he didn't, wasn't aware of the holidays that were identified being commonly observed in the United States. Um, there's no precedent that would be specifically on point for any purposes for defining the legal definition of a religious holiday. And I think bottom line, uh, the spirit of what the charter indicates is that we have, have this hearing and provide the public the opportunity to come forward and express their concerns. We've put the dates out there, we've made them public in advance. Um, we have not received any feedback from folks opposed to those uh, two dates. Uh, when you look at the, the former definitions and requirements under the Charter, we ordinarily would have had the meeting on Monday, June 3rd, rather than Monday, June 10th. We now have the flexibility to postpone it that one week, which gives a little bit of flexibility within the facilities that we need to use for town meeting at the middle high school. Uh, for the October town meeting, we'd be falling right in line with where it would normally fall, which is the first Monday in October. And so at this point, our recommendation is for the board to vote um, relative to establishing the dates. And the date in October again was? October 7th, 7th the first Monday. Mike. Okay. One second. Yes, Mr. Masseri. Just a question. And on the June uh, town meeting date, if we were to go to two nights, is there a second night date picked? Normally we've done a Monday and a Thursday, and I see here notes from town clerk that she'll be away at a conference. That is correct. Uh, she will be out of um, out of town. We did not identify a second date. That's something that's normally um, been identified at the adjournment of the meeting. But there are some restrictions on us in terms of her availability. Um, Looking at what she identified, though, it does appear she that everybody, and I believe everybody who would need to be involved is available the following night, Monday, uh, Tuesday, June 11th. So if we want to um, agree to schedule whatever board meeting might need to be scheduled in advance yep. and then cancel it if it's not needed, we could do that. Perfect. But my recommendation would be to go to June, June um, 11th for the uh, June meeting. Uh, for the October meeting, um, it actually looks like that... Uh, Thursday the 10th would be the next available date based on the holidays, but we could nail that down as we get closer. Yeah, and again, the board's not required to set that. The at this the yeah. And I do think, um, Mr. Moderator, those dates, have they been forwarded to you, the two that I just identified here, the, uh, the June 10th and October 7th? Yes. So that would be for the second night, if needed. Oh, the second. Although I have a second. <laughs> right. Just follow along. Right. <laughs> we outlawed them about a year ago. If we do, we're going to blame lottery. Not 30 <laughs> articles. Is there anybody like to question? It's open public hearing, so. 
and again, Mr. Chairman, to the public uh, who may be watching at home, so this is the first time we're setting the annual, um, both of the annual town meeting dates under the new uh, charter provisions, which were approved at town meeting last June by the legislature in the fall, signed into law by the governor in the fall and early winter. Um, Just to refresh everyone's memory, it now the bylaw, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it allows us to pick a date any time in the month of June and any date within the month of October, as long as it doesn't conflict with any national or religious holidays. Correct. Correct. Okay. Motion. So we don't have any other uh, close, close the public hearing. We'll take a motion. Mr. Chairman, in accordance with the Town of North Reading Charter 2-4-1, I move to set the date for the 2019 town meetings as follows. Monday, June 10, 2019, and Monday, October 7, 2019. Second. And a motion and a second. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. One absent. Okay. We have um, about nine more minutes before the next hearing. And what a... Uh, we go ahead and do old business and new business while we're waiting, and then if not, we'll take a five-minute recess. Um, Mr. Masseri, do you have any old or new business you want to bring up? None at this time. Mr. Schultz? None. Mrs. Mignopelli? So we'll take a recess of about six minutes, if that's okay, and then we'll, we'll convene back here at 8.25.
But um, I saw something that autistic. I think we're good time wise. This kid made like a fidget <laughs> We're going to reconvene. Okay. We have a 8:30 Class Two license application for VW Gas LLC doing business as Enterprise Petroleum at 144 Main Street. Do I have a uh, have a hearing notice? Oh. No, we don't have a hearing notice. There isn't a hearing. There isn't a hearing. So notice. it's not a hearing. Or there is? So it, it is a hearing for the applicant. So. It's not an advertised public hearing. Okay. Um, other than on the agenda. So there's no notice requirement for us other than to notify the applicant, which he's been notified. Right. Clearly, he's here. Mr. Gilberto, then I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, I would invite, uh, I believe you're uh, Mr. Valentine Nadanga. Is that correct? You're the applicant? Yeah, could you come to the podium just to give us a, a description of your what you're applying for? And if you could identify yourselves for the audience. Valentine <coughs> Nadanga. Uh, around the gas station at uh, 144 Main Street, Enterprise Petroleum, VW Gas, and uh, I will I'm applying for this uh, class two license to sell used cars because I will need some more income to be able to make my business successful in this area. Thank you. Having a hard time hearing you, I apologize. Uh, I Continue. Can. So you, you applied for the Class 2 license? Yes, sir. Do you have a license anywhere else? I have, um, I do not have a tool, I am sorry, <laughs> go to tool. I do not have a Class 2 license anywhere else right now. That I do, Mr. Gilberto. I, I have a, just a few questions for you, Mr. Nadanga. Am, am I pronouncing your, your name right? Correct. Right. Okay. So, what is your principal business again? I to sell gas. I have a gas station. I have a garage there. And uh, what's the address that you operate the business out of? One forty-four Main Street, in North Reading. Okay. And uh, do you own VW Towing? Yes, sir. And where is that located at? 144 Main Street. And v VW Towing, what, what kind of business is that? Is it? It's a tow company. It's just uh, tow trucks. Tow trucks? Yes, sir. And so you operate that out of 144 Main Street? Yes, sir. And do you have any business on 142 Main Street? Not anymore. I Was this continued? And you indicated that you um, you have a shop or a garage? Yes, sir. I have a, I have a three bay garage at 144 Main. And that's uh, auto repair? Auto repair, sir. Auto repair. Okay, and how, how busy is the garage? How many vehicles do you repair there on an average week? In a weekly basis, we do about, uh, about 20 vehicles. How many? About 20. About 20, okay. Wow. And is it just you, or do you have employees? There? I have half employees. Uh, sorry, okay. between, between my two company and uh, the garage, I have uh, 15 employees. I'm 90 percent from now already. F 15 employees. Yes, sir. Are they all working out of 144 Main Street? They all work out of 144 Main Street. Uh, do they do they work in shifts? Uh, how many how many of them uh, work at the same time? They, some uh, gas attendants, mechanics, 
and the tow truck operators. And does anyone else operate a repair business out of 144 Main Street? I see a couple. It looks like there used to be people there. So I see that I just received names. I don't know. I just like in the mail, I'll see like many different names coming, which I don't have no idea who they were. So I don't even know where they are. So you think that there used to be people there? There used to be people there, but they're not there anymore. Okay. And your, um, your towing company, does it tow vehicles to the repair facility? Yes, sir. And do you tow only to the repair facility or do you tow to other facilities? I do bring to the repair facilities and I do have some salvage contracts where my trucks are always at. My trucks are always out for some salvage contracts I have. And how many, how many tow trucks at 144 Main Street? I have 10, but they're, they're never there all of them. And how, how many of them are at 144 Main Street normally? Uh, at night, I believe at night you could get uh, about four or five pack. There depends on what drivers, where they were, and sometimes, most of the time, they pack at uh, North Bellerica, at Copart, North Bellerica. So, I, but. And um, you mentioned that you had 15 employees among the, the three businesses. How many of them are tow truck operators? Tow truck operators, I have uh, 11 of them. And how busy is a towing company? How often are you towing companies to or from 144 Main Street? To or from 144 Main Street is not really. Not, not really? No, 144 is just like... Uh, where the office is, but the business is, uh, we don't tow like, it's not like you tow cars in and out of the corner. Okay. I just have a couple more questions for you, Mr. Nadanga. Okay. Um, so I, I, you, is your towing business operating as an accessory to the repair shop? Yes, sir. Okay, but you, you said you're not really towing for the repair shop. No, I did tow for the repair shops. I mean, like, it's not like, a busy something like every two minutes you have a truck coming in into the repair shop now. But the tow for the repair shops, like I get called even for on my way in here, I have a customer who break down at uh, Walmart and they're calling me now but there's nobody even available to do it now for them. Okay. Um do you, so do you have any contracts for um, any other towing companies or for insurance companies? I do, I do have contracts for insurance companies for breakdown, breakdown cars, I pick them up and repair them. And do you sublease any of the property at 142 or 140 or 144 Main Street to anybody else? No, sir. And um, a gentleman by the name of Jose Santana, is he, do you know who that is? Leo Santana. What's that? Leo Santana. Leo Santana, who, who is my, he's, I'm mean, my mechanic. He's your mechanic? Yes, sir. So is he an employee of yours or? He's an employee of mine. And for your business, do you have any um, partners in the business or is it just you or? No, just me. Just you. Yes, sir. And this license is for your own business and not for anybody else? Just for my business, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, 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 Police Chief and uh, Public Safety, Police Chief, Public Safety Director and the Building Inspector are here. I just would ask if we could hear from them on a couple of matters. Mr. Jones, you just a, a few questions. Um, you mentioned you tow for different insurance companies. Yes, you tow for AAA as well? 
I don't have triple A yet. Okay. How many cars a week are you towing at this location? Bringing in for repairs, I do about 20. About 20? About 20 cars. Okay. And what hours of the day are you towing? If you get a call in the middle of the night, are you going out? Is it 24 hour towing? We used to be 24 hours towing, but not now anymore. I used to be 24 hours towing when I was at my other location. But here in North Reading, we not. Because I know you have a neighborhood right behind you there with some houses. What's the latest you would tow? Like now, we shut down already. We shut down at 8. 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock. Nobody's okay. there. Right? Thank you. You're welcome. Well, get me to what he's saying about towing. Um, it's really not an allowed use um, within that area, within a highway business. Um, there was a violation notice sent to them earlier telling them they, they could not have a tow, tow business. So they were basically shut down. I, I asked them that they had to uh, cease and desist. Um, what happened from that point on was they applied, <coughs> they appealed my decision to the Zoning Board of Appeals. The Zoning Board of Appeals gave them permission or allowed them for a service station. But the service station was for an accessory, accessory use as towing. So there shouldn't be a towing business there. Am I clear with that or? It's not a use permitted in that zone. Correct. So the zoning board can't override zoning and allow use. They cannot not override use. zoning. And, no. and what, what ended up happening here was they allowed an accessory use. Of towing? To, to the service, to the service station. They allowed an accessory use to the service station. They never said how many vehicles he could, he could have. But this is a gas station. Correct. The accessory use is a repair. Correct. Not a towing. He's not supposed to have a towing business. Is he allowed to have a repair? <coughs> he is allowed to have repair. How long has he been there as a repair? How long have you been there as a repair shop? Uh, I just acquired a place, but the place has been at a repair shop since. When did you acquire it? It's about uh, six months now. I may be able to clear some, some of this up because some of the information he gave you tonight is not accurate. Um, with typical licenses, the town administrator asks the police department as well as other town departments to provide feedback on the location as well as the applicant. Um, so when this uh, application came to me, um, we began an investigation. So I'm just going to give you a summary of facts. On January 2nd of 2018, Mr. Nadanga filed a certificate of organization with the Massachusetts Secretary of State's Office for VW Towing LLC. Um, in that filing, it listed its services to be rendered as towing services and roadside assistance. The business address was out of Saugus. Um, on August 23rd of last year, he, he changed that address to 144 Main Street. There was no change in the services to be rendered. On August 21st of last year, the building commissioner reviewed a proposed business certificate for VW Towing. Um, the applicant was the same applicant before you today. The building commissioner did not approve that business certificate based upon the use was not permitted. Sometime in September of last year, myself and the building commissioner went to 142 Main Street to investigate signage of a towing business operating out of 142 Main Street. We did meet with Mr. Nadanga. He told the building commissioner that he had just signed a lease to operate his towing business from that location. The building commissioner explained that towing business was not allowed use for that property. He was advised to cease and desist. On August 29th of last year, the building commissioner sent a notice of violation to Mr. Nadanga for violating the town of North Reading bylaws. Um, the commissioner's notice explained that towing was not listed in the town's bylaws and is an allowed use in the highway business district. On September 28, 2018, a ZBA appeal was filed, by the, uh, was filed on the Building Commission's decision. Um, on October 10th of last year, Mr. Nadanga filed a certificate of organization with the Secretary of State's Office for VW Gas, LLC. In that filing, he listed the services to be rented as a gas station and, and auto mechanic services. On October 18th, the Zoning Board of Appeals held a hearing on the petition from Mr. Nadanga on the building commissioner's notice. 
On December 10th, the Zoning Board of Appeals issued a decision relating to 142 Main Street and 144 Main Street. The Board of Appeals found 142 Main Street that the property was, has a principal use of rent control trailer park for the purposes of providing housing within the single family trailers located on the property. The Board of Appeals voted unanimously to deny the request for a special permit for towing and storage of motor vehicles on 142 Main Street. The Board found this use as prohibited within the zoning bylaws and that um, the use would be detrimental to the residents residing on the property. They also issued a, board, uh, a decision on the Building Commissioner's um, decision on 144 Main Street. Um, the decision found that the petitioner, Mr. Nadanga, would be entitled to provide towing services to its repair customers as an accessory to the principal use, but would not be allowed to operate a separate towing or storage operation not related specifically to the principal use in the site. It's, it should be noted, since this building commissioner issued his notice uh, of violation on August 29th, VW Towing has continued to operate a towing business at 144 Main Street. There are vehicles, boats, parts, stored on 142 Main Street. Both properties have continued to operate this way up to the submission of this summary this evening. Um, at, from the police department's end, throughout the month of December, on diverse dates, members of the police department made observations of 142 and 144 Main Street, as well as the operation of VW tow, towing and vehicles operating from that location. Regarding the observations of the tow trucks on six different dates, VW tow trucks left 144 Main Street in the early morning hours. Um, during those times, 12 vehicles were towed by VW tow trucks with only one of them being towed back to North Reading. The other 11, 11 vehicles were towed to Copart Auto Facility in Bill Ricker. And for the most part, um, Copart is utilized by insurance companies to liquidate crash vehicles. Um, they also towed vehicles to Linway Auto Auction in Bill Ricker. Um, it was unknown if they were actually working for um, insurance companies or um, specifically for the automotive dealers. We were able to establish that VW towing is not an accessory used to VW auto repair as stated to the Town of North Reading Building Inspector and Board of Appeals by Mr. Nadanga. We based his finding on our month-long investigation and included observations on both the site and remote locations. On average, there are approximately four to six tow trucks operating out of 144 Main Street. The repair facility garage located at 144 Main Street is a two-bay repair facility with very little, if any, repair activity. The facility would not require five tow trucks to repair its customers, uh, to service its repair customers. It appears as though VW Auto Repair may only exist on paper. During the course of the investigation, it was learned that Santana Auto Repair, not VW Auto Repair, is operating from 144 Main Street. One of our investigators confirmed this by speaking with Jose Santana and, and obtained a business card describing the business as Santana Auto Repair specializing in brakes, air conditioning, computer diagnostics, 144 Main Street, North Reading, Mass. It's believed that VW Auto Repair was formed on paper to assist in creating the appearance of a legitimate auto repair facility to use the towing business as an accessory. As far as the site location goes, within the past 18 months, 142 and 144 Main Street were the focus of a lengthy investigation by the North Reading Police Department related to the allegations of deceptive practices. During that investigation, we determined the holder of that Class II license subleased the license for cash to several individuals without making proper notifications to the town. This created a situation of unknown individuals selling used automobiles to the public. On several occasions, those sales were in violation of criminal and civil statutes under Mass General Law. Mr. Minibel. So the, who subleased that class to? Who so at the, the time it, that subleased it? At the time it was um, A1 Auto Sales, uh, I believe it was um, yeah. Mangillo, which Mangillo. was the name, um, he leased it to two people. One of them actually had an arrest warrant um, and um, we, we ended up finding them eventually, but um, they were defrauding customers, turning back odometers, not fulfilling their yeah. warranty info. Didn't we revoke yeah. that? Yes, yeah, you we did. We had we a revocation that. here. Correct. So how is it, so there's no, there aren't any auto sales going on right now? Not that we're aware of. No. But it's the repair part that's got me all confused there. Yes. But Mr. Schultz will come uh, back to me. Chief Murphy, you mentioned at some point in your presentation there was 
one day where they observed 12 uh, different runs out of there? Was that in one day? So they, they never came out of the auto, the repairs facility or anything on 144 Main Street. The trucks come, the, the employees come in the morning, they leave for the day. They don't come back to North Rock. So that was 12 exits out of there in one calendar day? No, no, the four tow trucks left. They yep. picked up 12 vehicles along the way during the daytime and towed them to other facilities, not to North Riding. Only so one came back to North Riding. There were 12 trucks, Tow 12 cars towed in one day. Correct. Sir, you, you mentioned before you towed 20 a week. If you're doing 12 in one day, how are you doing 20 a week? No, uh, as I can hear what the chief said there, uh, let, let me first get to that one. He says 12 in a day. 12 in a day not bringing to that facility, like I said before. I do not, I do not bring cars like every, like a lot of cars in there every day. I have contract with insurance companies for auto repairs. And if I pick up a car and the car cannot be repaired, there's one thing I'll do. If I see, pick a car up and I know that it's something that cannot be fixed, there's only one thing I could do take it to the salvage, where they keep the salvage cars for the insurance. Sure, if I may just interrupt you for a second. How is that an accessory to you, to a repair business? No, I, I'm picking it up because I could. 90% chances that there's an accident here. There's a car here in this property needs no. to be picked up, which belongs to this insurance company. First thing, I pick it up. Secondly, I check if it's something I can fix. If I can't fix it, there's other, I can't bring it back to a customer's house. You I say it's 90% of the cars? 90% of the times. Okay. Okay. Well, I can't bring it back to the customer's house. I'll bring it to where they'll ask me next to take it off my yard because I don't have enough space to keep it. As Chief said there, 142, even at our last meeting here, there were things I mentioned here. Those things don't belong to me. Those things belong to the landlord. I have no, as, no rights on 142. I don't want to have anything doing with 142. Well, I'm 144. Sir, let me just try to bring us to where we're at. Right. And it sounds like the 144 is what you want to use. Yes, sir. Is not, it, it's not suitable or doesn't meet it's not suitable. the zoning. Absolutely not suitable. That's the end of the story. Unfortunately, do you have a lease on the property you're at? Yes, sir. Well, then the lease to me seems invalid because he leased you a property you can't use for the use you're looking for. We can't grant you a license. At least I'm not going to vote for the license because it doesn't conform with the authorized use. <coughs> is, is that clear? I just want to make sure that's clear. And I'm not. So, so the, the used car sales use is something that is not otherwise allowed under the highway, district, highway zoning uh, district. Uh, pursuant to our bylaws. However, there was a grandfathered use for this, um, most recently in the form of the license that A1 had, which was revoked in January. Uh, we are not saying that the use, the Class 2 license for used car sales is not a legal use, but what, what my, the memorandum that we provided you is saying is that we are um, questioning the applicant and questioning whether the site is an appropriate site based on the standard that's been established in the law. So it isn't really a zoning or use question. It's more of a question about the suitability of the applicant and the suitability of the specific site. Okay. And we believe there are significant concerns with both. Okay. Mrs. Mignapelli. Okay. So just let me, so I can understand this, because I didn't actually get the packet with the application. I only got the, the board's packet, so I didn't get to review all of this. So. There was a license, class two license there, we revoked. That use was grandfathered for that license holder though. These are purely particular to the, the licensee, not to the location, right? So when we spoke with town council about that, we brought that up uh, and the response that we got was that the use the, the used car sale use was grandfathered to the location and not limited to the licensee. So it's a permanent grandfather. So anyone can come forward like he's doing <coughs> in the car. They can, unless it lapses for, I believe it's two years. In but which it's place? only been lapsed for about a year. Correct. Now. A year and a month, a year, about a year now. Correct. So he's asking for something that was already permitted previously. No. Yeah, for no. A, the other auto, they were 
They weren't Last a tow company. I think. No, no, the zoning board gave them the towing, so why, I don't know why we're talking about that, because that has nothing to do with this. I think that this question here is asking for a Class two license, right. but in the review of the business itself, there have been some issues raised right. because of using the <coughs> towing in a way that's not permitted. So there's a question about whether or not we should grant a class two license for the sale of vehicles on the property. Forgetting the fact that if his grandfather's grandfather, nothing we can do about it unless it expires. So the issue here is related to the individual business. Mr. Gilbert. Can I get that straight, Michael? <coughs> Mr. Gilbert is going to clarify it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just to answer the question, um, Select Board Member Mignapelli, uh, I, I think what, what we're looking at with regard to this particular site is that it, um, it had uses previously of the grandfathered used car sales, the gas station, and the repair facility. And what has happened um, since the last used car facility was operating there is the site has now been further approved for accessory use of tow, putting, in, in my opinion, I believe in the building inspector's opinion as well, further pressure on this one particular site with now three businesses and an accessory business that are being proposed for it. That's not the only concern that we have for the property, but that's why we're bringing the towing up because it is not allowed under the town zoning. Um, there is some evidence that 15 or more years ago towing did occur at that site, um, but that's not no longer a protected grandfathered use. I really actually can't get beyond the fact that zoning overrode the building commissioner's orders here on yeah. saying, suggesting it's incidental, but that's, that's on zoning that they allowed towing there when he's saying it's not permitted. So. I can't get past that, but let me just ask you, do you own a business in Saugus? Used to. When did you stop owning that business? Um, I, moved, well, I moved it here like... Um, you moved your towing business here? I moved here to North Reading. So I moved to North Reading, got a lease on 142. This is, this is how I came to find, I got a lease for 142 for towing. I, knew that I, I wasn't in a gas business. I came here for towing. I started towing there, then one day a uh, chief walked in and told me like, oh, this towing is not allowed here. I said, but this guy can give me a lease on something that he knows is not allowed because he knows what I do. So when that came up, then we pushed the, the license was not approved. Came to the zoning board. Before we came to the zoning board, I rented the garage bay from the previous owner. I rented the garage bay, which, like they say, Leo Santana. Leo Santana is a mechanic who used to work in that garage bay. So when I took over, when I got the garage, he offered to work for me instead of leaving because he had nowhere else to go. And he's an elderly person, which I, I didn't find it funny to kick him out. So I, I just want to ask you, though, me. your business that you had in Saugus, that you it's relocated close. here, was a towing business. Was towing business. Okay, so you don't, you're not a car repair, you're not a mechanic. No, I got a, there in Saugus, I had a car repairs and mechanic. Okay, and so towing. do you still have that? I don't have that anymore. What, what happened to that? I have to shut that one down to come here. I sold that one to somebody else and get this one here. So did you have any issues or problems with the town that caused you to close that one? Never got an issue with the town of Sogos. I never get any issue with the town of Sogos. I still have properties in Sogos. I still have properties in Sogos. I st I'm still in Sogos every other day. So what properties do you have in Sargas? I have uh, uh, rental properties in Sargas. Okay. So, so I have okay. tenants in Sargas. Okay. I have, so I'm always there to check on my properties. Okay. So when I moved down here for this one, 
I get into the gas, when I, I, that happened, then the, fortunately, the guy who was running the gas wanted to sell out also. So I was like, oh, that's fine. Since I'm, I'm, I'm already running the garage, I'll just buy everything off you. So in front of the zoning board here, we're here with the guy who used to own the gas before all of us were here, when the decision was being made. So I just bought the gas off him and we move on from there. Then Leo Santana again. Leo Santana used to be a mechanic in that same facility. He's been there probably 10 years or what. He used to work in there. But when I bought the place, I asked him to leave. <coughs> I, just, I didn't know something would come up like that. But I bring a letter. I gave him a letter, actually. And then he came in and begged. But he's, he's an elderly person. You can't beg me. I'm not that bad that you just like... I'll just be like, no, 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 get out, get out. I can't kick him to the street. So I let him walk there. So he's working for me right now. Mr. Schultz, a couple of questions I'm, I'm confused. Mr. Santana, you have as a reference on your application. That's why I put his name as a reference, because he's my mechanic right there. He works <coughs> for me. He still works for me. But does he hold out his own business as well? He doesn't own any business anywhere right now. So does he hold out to the public that he has his own business? No. He doesn't. Right now, no. And I, I guess I'm confused. You want, you understand that Zoning Board of Appeals gave you authority to do towing simply as an accessory to the repairs? That's exactly what I'm doing. Why do you need five trucks to do that? I, I had ten trucks before I came here. Now I'm selling out. Actually, I have more. I have uh, now. Before we came in front of the zoning Sorry, board, I just need you to answer my question. How many bays do you have? Repair bays. Now? I have three bays. You have three bays. Two for mechanic. Why one do you for need tire. five trucks to handle three bays? Sir, I said I had the trucks before. So now what I'm doing, I'm selling out. I'm down, down downsizing. So I'm selling out the trucks now because I really do not need the trucks, as you say. I'm selling right now. If you look right now, I have four trucks now. I'm out there selling. But, sir, you're, you're clearly running a towing business out of a building that you've been told don't run a towing business out of. No, I'm not doing that. I follow exactly the rules that was given. Run it as a necessity to the business. That's what I'm doing. I'm not doing so, like, I'm not advertising like coming to the city hall like, oh, I want to tow for the police. I want to do this. No. Did they put parameters on that? He did. They, they did. did put parameters on it. They knew I have 10 trucks at the zoning board here. <coughs> Mr. Gilberto. So, with regard to the business, Chief, do you have information relative to the advertising of the facility for towing? I believe it's the advertising. I mean, I, I have a photograph I can give it to the board. It's very clear that they're here advertising right on the window of the business. Yeah. yeah the and I, I believe the board <coughs> is aware, but the owner or <coughs> the owner or Mr. Dadanga is appealing the special permit that was granted restricting it the to towing to accessory use um and uh, for, for the reason I, I can only assume is to expand it but i don't know that chief um <coughs> just to um answer the vice chair's question so the board of appeals found that the petitioner would be entitled to provide towing services to its repair customers as an accessory use to the principal use but would not be allowed to operate a separate towing or storage operation not related to the principal use on the site. That was part of the decision. That was basically the meat and potatoes of it. So they, they restricted it to his repair customers only, which he's not doing. So you said you have contracts with insurance companies. And I what are those <coughs> companies that you have contracts with? I have, I have contract with Geico, I have contract with Allstate, and if I pick up their cars, if it is something that cannot be repaired, they have a storage facility in North Bellerica, where I will have the truck, bring it there. So most cases, it's like, if I could go through my phone and show you, most cases, if they get to a customer house and they send me a picture, if there's something that I don't see any reason bringing it into the yard, first, the space I have is not enough for me to come pack something that I'm going to evaluate this thing in two days. No. So I just, just have just let me, just let me, so you have a contract with the carriers that you're going to go pick up a vehicle 
that they, their their client their customer has, and your your contract with them says you'll bring it back and fix it. I'm fix it. That doesn't really make much sense, just the way the insurance industry runs. But I understand what you're saying that if you can't fix it, then you bring it to their salvage yard. Yeah. But do you understand what the officials are saying is that doing that is not correct according to what you were permitted by the zoning board? Do you see what they're saying? That that's not a customer calling you up saying, my car is not working, can you tow it and fix it? Do you understand the difference there? Yeah, I could, I could get that. Because Geico and Allstate don't own those cars. I could get that right now, but even from the day, if we still go back to the minutes with the zoning boards here, that was brought up. Anywhere I go, what I say is exactly what I know. That day, I made it clear. This is who, what I do with the cars. What they told me is, okay, you don't have, you do not have a body shop here. So, if we go in by and we see a smashed car, which is what of the one of the reasons why I don't even want to see a smashed car stand by for a minute. If we go by here and we see a smashed car, then you'll be in problem. Yeah, because you're not a detailing, you're yeah, a repair shop. Yeah, right? so when I get something like that, I don't even want it to come into my yard. But if a car that drives, yes, you could bring it into the yard and then we take a look at it. Yeah, but by saying that, you're just confirming that that's the wrong, you, you're doing the wrong thing under the conditions right. that were made. That doesn't, you, you're working outside of your, what you're authorized to do. You know that. If that's the case, uh, that's easy to stop. Like I just said here, I am in a vein of flushing out those trucks. I really don't need them. I need maybe two trucks. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm selling out the trucks. Yeah, but it, that, that's that's a different business working for the insurance carriers than just working for your auto repair with those two trucks. How many tow truck drivers do you have? I have 11 tow truck drivers. Yeah, so if you have one mechanic for and 11 tow truck drivers, I that's pretty much the business is tow, towing. I have towing. three mechanics. Three mechanics, okay. Three mechanics. All right, but so, so do you hear what's that everyone's explaining that you can't, you do the towing business there? I, I, I understand. I've got it now. I've got it. I didn't get it either until it was explained in this hearing. Yeah. If from the first day I did get it back this way, it would have been a different thing. I just did, I was just following exactly the rule they gave me. No storage of cars in 142. You could use that place as a accessory to a business. Simply, that's simply what I thought I was doing. So I didn't know that I was going against it, but if you tell me that I'm going against that, then I could put a stop to that. It's pretty simple to me. I'm pretty sure you have to. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd be in violation of the conditions. Yeah, I'll put, I can but put That's a, a different board than us, but it matters in terms of our taking a look at a class too, because I, it might just compound the issues that are already existing there based on that yeah. incorrect use. Yeah. So, if that was the case, I could move that one out. But you never had a class two license right. to sell vehicles before. I too have never had a class two license in Massachusetts. But I have a, I have a license in the state of Indiana. Mr. Schultz. Uh, sir, we, we want all businesses in North Reading. Um, I'm just having a problem with, you're asking for a class two license, which really involves used cars and involves a public trust. And you've been thumbing your nose at our zoning board for, I don't know how many months now, obviously running a towing business when you know it's supposed to just be an accessory. Your own testimony tonight hurts your cause more than it helps it. And you're saying, I don't understand. I, I, I just, you're a businessman. I don't see how you don't understand this. And I can't, in good faith, 
vote for you to have a class two license when you're just disregarding our laws as it is now. We don't make the zoning laws here. We just have to enforce things. And, and we have laws for a reason. And when you're told accessory, but yet you have five trucks running out of there with 11 truck drivers and you have three bays, what do you want us to do? I, mean, I, I don't know. It so, doesn't pass the spell test to me. So our responsibility on the board is to grant licenses <coughs> as, again, as a privilege, not as an entitlement that we feel fits within the, the zoning that's provided and the information that's provided by the applicant. And then based on the feedback from all our departments. And in this case, I'm getting an unfavorable support for us to give a class two license for this operation, just based on all the information you've heard and including your testimony, which basically corroborates what they're saying. So, go on. Okay, I just want to ask the chief. So when you went in to investigate this class two and you, you saw um, <coughs> the applicant, Mr. Ndanka? Ndanka. Yes, when you saw, what, when you said this is not correct use, what happened then? It's still going on, obviously. Yeah, so at the time he was upset about it. Yes, um, of course. He thought he got hoodwinked by the property owner, and we said, well, it's not allowed you, similar to what the chair said. You can go back to him and essentially, you know, sign a lease knowing it was not a, an allowed use. Um, there's been some back and forth with town council regarding um, the property itself and whether or not the towing was an allowed use or grandfathered use, and that's been resolved. Um, so they've been, he's been given enough warnings, so to speak. Um, so when it's, uh, finally the building commission just issued the notice, and there's also a trailer on the property, which the property owner has not removed, which is in violation of the Zoning Board of Appeals as well. Um, I know that he had mentioned that he doesn't go into 142 Main Street. He has one of his tow trucks parked in the fence area right now, um, as of yesterday, so, um, I guess the long and short of it is there's a lot of shell game going on in trying to make sure it's all fitting into um, his future business, which is the towing. I mean, yeah, I, I know he mentioned something about the insurance companies. You don't call your insurance company to get your car repaired in a mechanic shop. You take that to an auto body shop. So um, we did see a, a burnt vehicle go there two weeks ago. Um, never got off the flatbed, but it was parked there for a couple of hours and then went to another facility. He also transports from salvage yards to dealerships. Um, it, it's not all customer based. It, a lot of it's within the, that network, so to speak. So, but I, I mean, I, I could understand the not understanding that. But what is there a current order in place saying stop that? Stop the actual towing business? Yes. There's no current order in place, reason being, because the Zoning Board of Appeals granted him a, the service station, but he granted him the accessory use to that. That is as an accessory. But within what the Zoning Board of Appeals granted him, there is some language in there. Is that yeah. correct? It's specific to the repair facility. So yeah. all he can do is tow a car from the street to the repair no, facility. No, I understand yeah. that, but. That's in the so order. you have told him what he's doing there is not Correct. in compliance with those conditions. Do you then have to issue another order to cease and desist to him? I mean, it, it's pretty clear. I don't that, see how I. Yeah. So there is there is an, just so you know there is an appeal of the board of appeals decision um, pending. So right now we haven't done anything. Oh, but one forty two and one forty four. So they. I didn't know that. So, so the landowner has actually appealed the Zoning Board of Appeals decision. Well, we should be, should until that trailer is removed too, we should probably take all the licenses away, right? Because it's not conforming right now. I don't believe there's any other licenses issued. There yeah, is. We, we have, we've only, the only license that I'm aware of that's pending is a class two. In terms of issued licenses, I don't think he has a license for us for the gas station or for the repair facility. Uh, how is the gas station running without a license? Yeah. Well, we don't license, occupancy. the board doesn't license gas stations uh, in town. There may be a state license that he has uh, from DEP or Wait, something Wait, the like repair that. facility doesn't have a license? It wouldn't be licensed through the town. No, it wouldn't be. Well, it's it may have a license, but not through the town. It's an occupancy 
that they're allowed to committed as person. Yeah, yeah. Per permitted as person. Correct. But I thought that trailer was supposed to be gone a long time ago. It was. Yeah. Yeah. It's an office trailer. It's, te it's for temporary use only. And you're supposed to have, uh, every 180 days, you're supposed to have another permit issued to, the, to a temporary trailer. Okay. So the Board of Appeals on that specific property has ordered that be removed as well, but it's still there. Okay. Michael, do you believe that the Board of Appeals, I haven't seen their document, was put in place such that it, if a not putting client, some other customer called and said, my car won't start. Tow truck from here picks it up to bring to the garage for repair. That's the way I look at the Board of Appeals. I believe that's how it's worded. That I think that was the intention that they thought because it was explained to them that the towing business was going to be for their customers. And what I'm hearing is maybe a piece of that, but a lot more. And that's well, in it my sounds opinion, like it's just a lot. Violation of the Board of Appeals. It's it just sounds like it's a lot where he's just basically parking his tow vehicles all night long and in the morning he takes them all out runs around the area and tows cars and then comes back and then sometimes leaves um, damaged vehicles on the back of them for some periods of time which was not what the use was supposed to be okay so do we have well I want to is there any you wanted to ask a question I want to give you one more chance to if there's anything else you wanted to say? Alex, uh, still as the chief says, they've come and tell me that I'm violating the Board of Appeals order. I don't think he met me. I've never, I've not met him. I've not seen him. I've met him once when I was at 144. And since then, I've never met him. So I don't know when he came and tell me that I'm violating the Board of Appeals uh, rules. Because I've never met him. He's saying you you claim that you had met him once before. He was the owner of the property. He met with the owner of the property, not you. No, no, I'm, we met. No, he met me when we were at 144. But now we're mixing, I mean 142. Now the fact is he's mixing the 142 issue and the problem after 142. 142 was over by the, after the meeting with the zoning board. But he's, he just mixed that in that he met me and gave me and tell me that, no, that's, that one was when we were at 142. And then when uh, the uh, chief of, uh, building inspector came and told me, okay, 142, he gave me the explanation. Then I understood with him because first, this is, what, is something i put in my money somewhere. I didn't know exactly what's going on. So when I get his explanation, I, I agree with him. If he's right there, I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. So I followed exactly what he told me to do. Okay, seize the operation here from today. Take down everything. I did everything the way he wanted me to do. I did exactly the way he wanted me to do. Take down, when we ended here, the decision was what? They're going to take out the, uh, the trailer, which is none of my problem. I'm not a landlord. We don't I, disagree. Sir, yeah. the problem is that you're not running the tow business to go out and get vehicles and bring them back to your repair, for the repairs. You're not doing that. You're running the tow business and doing other things other than that. And that's the issue at hand. Mr. Bellavance, did you want to ask? Bill Bellavance, 323 Haverhill Street. I just wanted to, an observation that um, this gentleman stated that there's no parking on the property, and then now we're talking about putting a used car, even one or two. There's no room on that property, so it was stated. Yeah. Just one day. Right. And, and the problem is behind the fence has always been a mystery. Correct. Right? Yeah. And that's, that's been another issue. And even your vehicle's been behind that fence, which is on the 142 side. So that's why there's a lot of confusion. So. Just one, uh, yes. one more comment. So just to clarify uh, what Mr. Dandanga just said. So on August 29th, um, the building commissioner sent a violation notice to him at 144 Main Street, essentially advising him that VW Towing, um, you are illegally operating a tow business. Um, 
and the correspondence outlined a conversation that took place with him and his business partner. Uh, essentially, he was. Um, to Mr. Ndanga? Correct. Okay. So it says, the bottom paragraph says, therefore, you must remove the signs immediately and remove the towing operation along with the tow truck from this location within seven days of the correspondence. If you fail to do so by the close of business on September 5th, the town of North Reading may act further. He, he appealed that, this notice, to 144 Main Street. And then there was actually a separate email um, on the same date, essentially advising him of exactly the same contents of the letter um, at his vwtowingllc.com email. So I don't know that we're confusing it, but we were specific to the property locations of 142 and 144. Okay. Mr. Gilberto, you have anything else? They're next door to each other, right? It's They're almost the same problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. correct. But, okay, but it's important for me to know that at least you were, no, you were told that and, and that you know that you can't do that type of towing. But however, they allowed you something smaller than that just for your repair shop. But that doesn't, that's not what you're doing. You're doing a different thing for insurance companies. But now that's under an appeal because they want the broader towing use? We believe so. Uh, presumably. I don't know who appealed it. I think it was a property owner on behalf. That, that decision, that's what I'm saying, that he's getting us <coughs> That all the appeals and what he's reading there is before we came in front of the zoning board. That's something that happened that brought us in front no, of the I zoning board. No, I understand that. So that whatever that's he's reading clear. there is something that is long past. We passed that, we closed <coughs> that chapter with the zoning board here. And what from the zoning board and the rules that was given from the zoning board are the rules I was following. So I wasn't going back again onto 142, what was going on in 142, the violation they were sending. When he came with a violation, I told him that, fine, I have no problem with that. I'll take the violation. It's the landlord's issue. I can't just walk into here. And so that one was for long past. 144. After zoning board, it, that's, the, that's the point where, that's what I believe we should be looking at. We shouldn't be looking at something that was already closed by the zoning board here. Mr. Denai, why didn't the uh, property owner join you this evening? <laughs> He's not, he wasn't here, even the day the zoning board, he wasn't here. He wasn't here with me. In front of the zoning board, he was not here. I understand, but this evening, why wouldn't he join you tonight? Because I actually didn't see any reason. Because first they asked me, if the same lawyer that was here last time, he asked me, do you want me to go with you? So I told him, I, I don't see any reason why you have to come. I don't have any That's issue. That's fine. I'm going to close the public hearing unless anyone else has anything to say. Okay. We're going to close the public hearing. I think we've heard enough. We need to make a decision. I'll take a motion and we'll make a decision. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I move that the board determine that Mr. Valentin, the, the gang of VW Gas LLC, is not a proper person. <coughs> Keith, can you read this, please? Go over here. To engage. Mr. Schultz is getting over us a very bad flu, so apologize. Do you need me to read it, Kate? No, I, I, I think there's three choices here. So. Uh, I move to <coughs> determine that um, it's where it starts on the other page. Mr. Valentine Ndanga of BW Gas LLC is not a proper person to engage in class two motor vehicle sales because he is conducting an ongoing violation of a Zoning Board of Appeals decision by operating a towing business that is not accessory to a repair shop. <coughs> he is storing vehicles in violation of a Zoning Board of Appeals order, and he violated a building inspector's order by operating a towing business, and that Class Two motor vehicle sales will not be Mr. Ndanga's and VW Gas LLC's principal business 
because VW proposes to operate a used car dealership in addition to the gas station and repair shop identified in a certificate of organization filed with the Secretary of the Commonwealth. And Mr. Ndenga is appealing the Zoning Board of Appeals decision restricting a towing business as an accessory to the repair shop only and that Mr. Ndenga does not have available a place of business suitable for the purpose of class two <coughs> motor vehicle sales because 144 Main Street has an ongoing zoning violation in not removing the office trailer, an ongoing zoning violation of a zoning board of appeals decision by allowing the operating of a towing business that is not accessory to a repair shop and had an ongoing violation of a building inspector's order in allowing the operating of a towing business that when the last class two <coughs> license was in effect. The business operating out of 144 Main Street were a gas station, an auto repair facility, and a used <coughs> car dealership. Granting a class two license to this site at this time would add used car sales to the existing permitted uses of a gas station and an auto repair facility with recently permitted accessory towing, including tow trucks parked at the property. It is unclear how these businesses can coexist under the existing approved site plan. Therefore, I move to deny the Class II license requested by Mr. Valentine Ndanga of VW Gas LLC doing business as Enterprise Petroleum. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Schultz. <coughs> Any more discussion? Well, Just a comment. I, I, I clearly uh, can't vote in favor of the request will be supporting the motion. But I do believe that if the issue with the towing was resolved and proof of adequate storage for the class two license, that I would reconsider at a later date. I want to make that clear. Okay. And I would I agree with that, but I would just add that it's of concern to me that when you ask for a license there's all this confusion swirling around it and even in the midst of enforcement officials explaining what the issues are you, you are still not you still don't understand that and I, I agree that let's see where the appeal <coughs> what happens with the appeal but it still doesn't negate the fact that there may not be space for six cars based on now adding a towing business, let's say the appeal no, is successful. I'll, I'll move my tow company. I'll, I'll sell out the tow company. I'll sell it out. No, I, I, it I don't, it's, this isn't so, the time for debate or dialogue, but you again, everything you're saying is confirming what our enforcement officials are explaining, that it's not being used in accordance with what the zoning says. So I can't agree to add it at this point, but maybe would consider at a later time, depending on how that appeal results. There is no appeal nowhere. Uh, my, my, uh, there's z no appeal nowhere. I don't know where he's coming with appeal. Nobody has appealed anything. No decision has been appealed. If any decisions appealed, I should so know. Then I wouldn't the, be able to support a The appeal he's talking that. about is an appeal that was already clear. They appealed the building inspector's decision. That's why we went in front of the zoning board. And then it was resolved that day. So that part of the whole discussion was ended right that day. Okay. So I now I understand. The, the mix up we have here is He's bringing something that's long close into something new. That's where the mix up is. I'm not mixed up about No, that. not you. I mean like where I the think is you might us up. that you might be mixed up in thinking that they resolved it to say you could operate a towing company and you're saying you have a towing company, which the whole point of what these enforcement officials have explained to us and again to you is that's not allowed. As incidental to what was allowed is incidental to your repair shop, not a towing business. So that's two different things. So even if there isn't an appeal of it, I wouldn't be in favor of granting a class two. 
at all because you are not understanding that right now as it's been right. explained over and over again. Mr. Schultz. Yeah, just real brief. I, I can't support this tonight, but if you show that you can follow the, the rules of the ZBA and do that for a period of time and show that you can follow our laws and our regulations, I would reconsider my vote. But right now, I think you totally understand what you're doing and you're just disregarding the zoning board. I, I just, I can't support that. Oh. And, and, and for me, the, the issue I'm having mainly with this whole thing is that it's really with the property owner, remember. But this but this property owner, he continues to provide leases to companies that completely via, make violations. We already had A1 Auto in this facility, and we got hundreds of complaints from residents all the way up to um, the Better Business Bureau have to get involved, and also the state have to get involved. and. You know, now here we are, we get more violations with a new use, and I think anything that comes forward to me from that the, uh, associated with any kind of business running out of this facility, I'm gonna say no to because we have a property owner that won't come here, fix the problems, clean up the area, remove the building that's supposed to be out, that trailer was supposed to be gone a long time ago, and I'm sorry, we can't be granting license to property owners that don't wanna obey the law. All they have to do, if they get these violations, fix the problems. We have a property owner that doesn't want to fix the problems. You, I would recommend getting to him and getting out of your lease because he's clearly not giving you the facility you need to run the operation you want. Doesn't fit the zoning. He didn't. He didn't. He gave you basically a false sense of um, availability of what you can do. It's wrong. So. This is a motion to deny, just so you're clear. The motion that was just read by Mrs. Minupelli is a motion to deny a class two license. I would just add one more thing. When the building commissioner <coughs> is saying that use isn't permitted and it gets appealed, which everyone has a right to do that, there has to be some compelling reason why all but one of them decides to override the building commissioner's determination it doesn't fit zoning and it has to be in writing why why they would have done why they would overturn it yeah. there has to be something really monumental for them to overturn their own enforcement official zoning opinion and that doesn't make much sense to me that that occurred here and that add, is add, added a level yeah. of confusion to this too so and no other comments from the board all those in favor aye Opposed? Unanimous. Sorry, sir. Okay, I think we've, um, do we have anybody old and new business, anything? No, we, did it, yeah. we already did it. I know, we just want to make sure. No follow-ups. We're all good. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion, I got a second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.